Then we'll talk, let you meet our new board members, our current board members and our new board members. After that, we wanna share membership updates for those of you all who are members and those who want to become members. After that, we are featuring two programs tonight. After we talk about our legislative priorities for this year, we will we will talk about our Regency program so you can see what we've been doing there in our expand ECE program. You are going to be so excited about the work that your BCI Atlanta is doing. And then finally, we will share ways that you can get involved because we know that's why you're here. You are here so you can figure out what can I do to support the mission and the vision of this awesome organization. So welcome and happy new year. We want to hear from you in the chat to let us know, first of all, if you're new here. So if you are new here, type in the chat, new here, <laughs> and uh, tell us about yourself. You know, just uh, in the chat, tell us um, who you are, what you do, so that we can welcome you to our meeting. And let's see, who is new here? Some, so many of you all are veterans you've been around. Let's see. Do I see Alice? Let's see in the chat. Thank you to our board members for welcoming everyone, our team. Uh, all right, so we have another moment that we will have to recognize you as well, but is there anyone who, okay, good, Latrice. Hi, Latrice, Dr. Rollins. So unmute Dr. Rollins, or you can type in the chat, it's your choice. Since we don't have a, a lot of new people, we have, we can open the mic for you. Again, feel free to type in the chat. Yes, go I'm ahead. Sorry. I was coming. I'm coming. <laughs> um, yes, Latrice Rollins. I am at Morehouse School of Medicine and proud to serve as a director of the National African American Child and Family Research Center. And I'm new ish to BCDI. I, I'm familiar, of course, with Dr. Visa. Um, she served on our panel for our conference last year. Um, but this is my first time being in a meeting. So thank you so much. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for the amazing work you're doing over at the Morehouse School of Medicine. She has the, a National Center for the African-American Child. You guys, it is awesome. So uh, during National Black Child Development Week last year, we were uh, able to focus on some of the work they were doing. Who else do I see? Alice Oliver, do I see? Yes, Alice, unmute and tell us who you are and what you do. What made you decide to join us today? Or you can type in the chat. Let's see. Yep. Thank you for your link. Yes, Dr. Rollins. Yes. All right, Alice, am I missing her? Okay, maybe she maybe she's shy. It's okay. Welcome to our meeting. We we're happy to have you here. Oh, okay. You are new here, but not to BCDI. Awesome. Great. And sometimes people from different affiliates join us as well. So uh, we're happy to have everyone here. Again, happy 2024. Everybody who knows me knows that I am so passionate about having a word of the year to guide me each year. And I don't call it New Year's resolution, but I call it, again, a word of the year, a word to guide me. And I want you to share your 2024 word. If you don't already have a word, put it in the chat, please. If you don't already have a word, this is a nice moment, a perfect moment to think of one to help guide you for 2024. As you're typing your word in the chat, and I have our team to shout some out in a moment, I'll just share mine to give you a moment to think and type. So uh, I'll start with last year. My word last year was enjoy. Uh, I capitalized and focused on the joy, the J-O-Y. So if you saw me on social media, I was doing lowercase e-n and capital J-O-Y because I wanted to focus on doing things that bring me joy. Opportunities that, that I accepted, speaking engagements, uh, vacations, friends, uh, anything that I did or people I engaged with, I wanted to be anything that brought me, again, joy. Not something I had to do, but what I wanted to do. And so what I decided for this year for 2024 is to take all of those, all of what I learned in 2023 about what I enjoy and I want to cherish those treasures. So in my 2024 word is cherish. I want to cherish the treasures that I recognize I enjoyed in 2023. 
So let's hear, and, and as you're typing, uh, what cherish means to me, you guys, is that I am focusing more on them. Because if we enjoy something and treasure someone, something, activities, then we should focus on and doing those more and showing people as well that we cherish them. All right, team, share what words you see in the chat. Dr. Visa, I see some really good ones. Um, we see faith a couple of times. I see clarity, um, joyous. Now that's a good one. Um, Dr. Barry, he has peace in here. Uh, grateful, maintain. These are some really great words. Creativity. Everyone can use a little bit more of that. Uh, let's see. What else do we have going on? Oh, they're coming in pretty quickly. To balance, newness, um, unique. That's a good one. Unique. Uh, intention. I love that. Setting intention for the year is always a, a must. Perseverance, serenity. It's a, there's a lot of words, Dr. Bisa. They've, they've come up with a lot of good words. Great words. And so I, I want to ask a couple of team members, Sharon and Dr. Sheila. Sharon, tell us why you chose Execute. Oh, wow. So I consider myself a visionary. Like I, I can see the big picture and I'm always coming up with all these plans and ideas. And so many of them have fallen by the wayside because I didn't take action. So this year, my word is execute to ensure that those plans, those ideas, those things that I have thought about this year, I can start to bring about. I love that. Yes, start to bring about. Dr. Sheila, was that you? I saw your word as well. Did I miss? My word is new, Dr. Bisa. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I chose the word new is because I want new experiences, new ideas, new grace, new mercy, new friendships, new adventures. So everything new this year, you know, bringing in, of course, some of the old, but rejuvenating those things, making those things brand new. So a do-over. So everything new, new, new. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. You know, y'all, we are surrounded by some amazing people. Does any one other person uh, want to unmute and share their word and their why? I'll share my <laughs> word and why. Good evening, everyone. This is my first night and I'm excited to be here. But my word was joyous. I am the joyous one in the group because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And no matter what is what is going on around me, I said, God, I'm going to experience your joy in every situation, because because I'm going to look for you in every situation, because he's truly in control. And so far, ladies, you know, when I condition you, when you condition your mind with the word that you're choosing, you are truly going to experience that. Things that I've endured and, and gone through 2023, the Lord has just really placed a smile on my face. I'm like, God, you are so good. So I'm looking forward to a very joyous year because he is my strength. And I pray that he's your strength as well. Thank you so much, Deborah, for sharing your word with us. And I want to say to our board members, as we introduce you tonight, and you will have a, a minute or so to just share a quick hello uh, and let everyone know why you decided to be on our board. We'll That's a great time to share your word as well. I saw them in the chat. So that's a great time uh, in a couple of slides to get ready to share your words. I want to give you all, all a heads up on that. Thank you for sharing your word of the year uh, on social media. Uh, if you follow hashtag word of the year or hashtag W O T. T-Y, uh, the acronym, you'll see so many different people's words of the year. And that is very inspirational. So, all right, about this meeting. So in quarter four of 2023, uh, on October 17th, we had our annual policy briefing. And you all confirmed for us, you know, hey, what issue should we focus on for Black children? What do you want us to target and advocate for in 2024? And so now once that was done, our team took all of the data uh, that uh, from that meeting. And now we are here today for you to hear the highlights from uh, what we learned you wanted us to focus on, how we pulled that together and decided on the programs and initiatives, and also what opportunities that you have to engage with us to advocate throughout the year. So that's what we are focusing on in this particular meeting. For those of you all who are new to us, if you go to bcialatlanta.org uh, slash about, you can learn more about what we do. We focus on the state of Georgia, even though our name is Atlanta, because we want to help everybody. Everybody knows we try to 
help everyone. And we have a lot of members who are not even in Georgia because there's no affiliate uh, in their area. So we are just excited. I see some of them on as well. Uh, so we are excited to engage you wherever you are. But Black children and families is what we do. And the way we uh, conceptualize how what our work is to everyone, we don't work directly with children, but we work with adults who have Black children in their lives. All right, I want you to think about that for a moment. We work with adults who have Black children in their lives. So whether you are a parent, an educator, a social worker, any child serving program, anyone who has Black children in their lives, an auntie, a cousin, an uncle, all of you all are important to our work and we consider you a stakeholder. So if you haven't seen our newest postcard, uh, last year, NBCDI rebranded the, the logo and as an affiliate, we rebranded rebrand too. These are our three areas of focus, family engagement, early care and education, and literacy. We had six focus areas, and I'll say the old regime in terms of, you know, for 50 plus years with NBCDI, there were six focus areas. And we were trying to focus on all six of them, y'all. And we decided to pull these three and the work that BCDI, NBCDI is currently doing with the 80 Central Outcomes for Black Child Development, which I'll share shortly, we decided that we wanted to combine that work and focus it in these three areas. This enables our team to do a better job at doing the work in the community instead of trying to do everything. Because sadly, our children and families need support in every single area on every single measure, in every single subject. It's, it's so unfortunate. But realistically, we know that these are the three areas that we can implement well with our, within our community. I want to thank our board members for 2023, and some were on the board for longer than that, for five years even. So I want to thank our board members who served with us just this last year. We had eight board members. I'm a board member, but I'm a non-voting member because I'm on the organization. But I want to thank uh, Tatiana, our chairwoman. And y'all, Tatiana has served in a number of roles. Wherever we need her is where she goes. Tatiana has been with us since I became president in 2018. So um, we'll, I'll, have, I'll be introducing her in a moment so she can uh, share as well. But thank you all for the work that you have done for being the support in leadership, being a leadership partner in this work. So I'm turning it over to Tatiana Elmore, our board chair, to share her reflections of the 2023 board and introduce our 2024 board uh, chair. Good evening, everyone. Thank you again, first, again, to our 2023 Board of Directors. It has been a pleasure serving with you as your board chair. But today marks a new chapter in our collective journey as I step down as BCDI Atlanta Board Chair. I want to begin by expressing first my deepest gratitude for the profound privilege of being able to serve this organization, as Dr. Bisa mentioned, for five years. My journey began as treasurer in May of 2018 for four years. And as Dr. Bisa mentioned, I started to have various roles such as business and HR manager to support BCDI growth as a, a real organization through the um, leadership with Dr. Bisa. And I'm so proud of that work. But a year ago, you all entrusted me to step out of my role as treasurer and join as board chair. And it has been a great responsibility and I appreciate your willingness to allow me to lead. But at this moment, as of today, the baton of leadership gracefully is passed on to our remarkable Debbie Hillman. Debbie Hillman has been an amazing, amazing leader for our organization, and I'm happy to announce Debbie Hillman as our 2024 board chair or chairwoman. So excited. So as I step down as board chair, I am returning to my board treasurer role to continue to support the organization as best as I can. At this moment, I would like to introduce the wonderful new BCDI Atlanta 2024 board chair, our new chairwoman, Debbie Hillman. Thank you so much, Tatiana. Not only for the introduction, but for all that you have done in our organization. And 
I come to this role as someone who has been engaged in BCDI Atlanta and the national organization for a number of years. We have moved swiftly when it was needed. We moved slowly when it was needed. But the reality is that we have always moved according to the needs of the day. Thank you, as I introduce you as our new treasurer, because it's important in this organization, as many of us have found, to work where the work is needed. We have a big, big field, a big vineyard, and so as workers in that vineyard, we sometimes find ourselves needed more on the right side of the field. And other times we need it on the left side of the field. The bottom line is we are a group of individuals who don't mind getting our hands dirty. I would also like to introduce Margaret McCall as our vice chairwoman and Margaret has been around the BCDI community for a number of years as well. When Tatiana mentioned when she started, I thought, when did I start? Well, it was a long time before 2008. And it wasn't quite 1908, but... <laughs> In the 1990s, when I moved back to Georgia and back to the early childhood field, I found myself at home in Black child development. Brittany McDuffie is our new secretary. And so we want to thank Brittany for her willingness to step in, step up, and to get the job done. These are your officers for the 2024 year. When uh, Dr. Bisa asked our word, I brought my word from church and that is the word prosper. And sometimes people think prospering, prosperity are about money. Prospering actually means receiving abundance, breaking out, stepping up. And so we are going to prosper in BCDI, not just as it relates to money, but as it relates to what we are able to do for Black children, their families, and the communities in which they reside. Next slide, please. And Debbie, are you going to have them say their word after everyone or tell me what you want to do? Huh? Want to have the officer share their word now or after? Sure, we can do that. Margaret, Vice uh, Chairwoman, could you tell us your word? I don't see Margaret. So moving Margaret on. is a busy woman too. So that's, that's one of the criteria for being part of this organization <laughs> is being busy. Tatiana, will you tell us your word? Yes, absolutely. My word for 2024 is clarity. I wear a lot of hats, mother role right now, giving a snack as I continue on a board meeting. So I'm just looking for clarity that will guide my path and my journey for 2024 as I experience new challenges and overcome new things in life. So thank you. Thank you, Brittany. What's your word for 2024? Well, I didn't have one before starting this meeting, but thinking, <laughs> I would say enjoy because I tend to be the one to get in my head a lot and don't really enjoy moments. So this year, I want to say I'm really going to take time to really enjoy myself, take in the moment, not overthink things. Thank you. So our members at large are, drum roll, please. Dr. Bisa mentioned that she is a non-voting member as a member of the staff. We have Bridget Willis, who is a family child care owner and director of a Better Day Preparatory Academy. 
So Bridget, would you tell us your word? Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of the, the new board as we're moving forward in the position of member at large. And the word that I want to highlight is perseverance. Uh, and I was just thinking about all the different things, all the different tasks. We have all these great ideas. We want to, we're always in the work, in the work, in the work. So I'm thinking perseverance to not just stay in the work, but rising up above to see how the goal is attainable. So the perseverance is honoring the moving, uh, similar to what you were sharing, uh, Ms. Deb, with the prosperity. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we uh, want to give a round of applause to our other two members who are new to our organization in this role, Nathan Thompson and Dr. Keon N. Berry. So Nathan, would you tell us a little bit about what brings you to the board? What's Absolutely. your word for 2024? All right, well, I am ex so excited to be a part of this board. Um, I got really excited last year going to the summit and, and really also, Thrilled to be presenting at the summit in February with my coworker Alice Oliver, who's on the call here. Um, we we had the privilege to present um, at the national conference as well. So um, this this organization is very much in line with the work that I do with Rollins Center and the Cox Campus. I always say that I am an activist first and an educator second. Um, so I'm really excited. My word this year is balance. And when I think about balance, I think about that in terms of the balance of the progressive work that I'm committed to and also self-care so that I have the energy to, to pour out to others. But I also think in terms of allowing that space for others as well. So a balance for myself and a balance as a community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Barry. Thank you so much. And I'm I'm so excited to be here. It is the Founders Day of the Men in Blue. So shout out to anybody who's on the call who is a Sigma. I have on my Sigma tie, my Sigma <laughs> pin. I'm so happy to be here, y'all. I'm Dr. Keon and Barry, and I'm here for two reasons. Um, I joined the board for two reasons. One, because I believe in this vision, and two, because I believe in this visionary. And so um, I wanted to just give this organization my time and my talent. And my word for 2024 is going to be peace. And um, Chairwoman, you know, one thing that you said, you know, you said you got your word from church and I did as well. And let me tell you something. It's not Sunday, but I'll preach. And I will say one thing about the good Lord and, and that I've learned about maintaining uh, uh, that I've learned about peace in general is that, you know, um, with peace, when you ask God for peace, he'll test it. And so I'm learning how to protect my peace in 2024. Thank you guys so much. So thank you and thank you to all of the board members of BCDI Atlanta. Whether you are someone who served already or someone who's getting ready to serve, we want to certainly remember that we are the people that our children, families, and communities have been waiting for. We are appointed and anointed for such a time as this. Thank you, Dr. Bigsa. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Debbie. And I see Margaret McCall was able to jump in. I, I believe she teaches a class tonight uh, at Mercer University, but I'm glad she was able to join. Margaret, our vice chair, please share with us why you uh, continue to work with us on the board because you have moved into this new role. You were already serving on our board and now you're a vice chairwoman and also your word of the year if you have one. Excuse me, I was still muted. Um, my word for the uh, year is not late. I promise, even <laughs> though I was late. Uh, uh, my word for the year is joy. Um, I am looking to enjoy and have joy and 
hopefully bring joy to others throughout this year. So that's my word for the year. And I'm delighted to be part of BCDI. I have been a part for many years uh, in many capacities and I am delighted to serve as the vice chair with Debbie Hillman and Tatiana and Brittany. I'm excited to see what we can do this year. So thank you for having me and I'm so sorry I was late. Thank you so much to our board. Let's give our board another round of applause, everyone. Yes, we're so thankful for you partnering with us for your time. And uh, if one of our team members were uh, remove the spotlight, I was adding them to make sure we saw everyone. Uh, that would be great. Thank you. So excited. Well, y'all, listen, we have amazing board members who work full time every day. Some are retired, but still not really. <laughs> I'm sort of retired. Uh, retired in education does not mean retired, but we could not do the work we do every day without the team who works every single day. So I want to give a shout out to our team members who actually work for our organization, whether it's part-time, full-time, contractor. Y'all, this is only a third of the people who help BCDI Atlanta to run. So I want to start with our operations coordinator, Ms. Ashley Williams. You know, she's the right hand along with Lubna Budwani. They work with me every single day to manage the office of the organization. So all the technologies, all, and there are a lot of technologies. They came on with us last uh, summer as, you know, we needed a reorg because there's so much that needs to happen. And all we had on our team, you all, were early education specialists and experts. And we realized that for the daily work of this business, because nonprofits, we are a business, for the daily work to get done, we needed some people who know about business, who know about communications. And so in that reorg, we were gifted Ashley and Lubna. They actually applied for the same position, y'all. And we love them both, so we just hired them both. <laughs> so Ashley is our operations coordinator. Lubna is our administrative coordinator, an amazing team. And let's just give them a quick round of applause and a shout out to let them know how much we care about them. And uh, you'll hear uh, Ashley talking a little bit. And I want to, what I want to say about them is, you know, they came in, Last summer, ready to rock and roll. Last August, they wanted to do more and more and more and more. And I was like, y'all, there's a lot to do. I don't want to run y'all away. So let me spoon feed you and give you a little bit at a time. Well, when we did their evaluations in December, their staff evaluations, the reigning thing was more. They want more. They asked to do more work, more challenging work. And in, in, ask for more, y'all. I felt like I was being pumped. <laughs> I felt like I was on candid camera. Is this real? Are people really asking to do more? But they are. And they're so excited to dig in the daily work and they make it so much easier for me to do the work that I do. So shout out to Ashley and Lubna. We appreciate both of you. We also have uh, on the left side, if you look at our holiday picture, we had our holiday luncheon at Pascal's in December. So we have up the top next to me, we have Cole, who works in our marketing communications team, our marketing team. Uh, you see Ashley and Lubna below me to the uh, left of me on the picture. Uh, at the bottom, right under me is Sharon Hudgens Beck, who has also been with us for about three years now working in our programs. She's an early education uh, specialist and she helps to run our program. She coordinates our program. So we're really happy to hear, have Sharon. You'll hear from her tonight as well. You know who Debbie is. We invited our board chairs to come and celebrate with us. So Debbie came out to let them know how special they were to us. And we all enjoyed a wonderful lunch. And below at the very bottom on that picture is Asif Shasani. Asif manages our marketing team. He's our chief marketing officer. And he makes sure that we have everything that we need from website to blog to newsletter to graphics. He has a designed a whole brand kit for us in Canva. We love our team. And again, this is only a third of our team. We have about 15 people or more who work with us. And you'll get a chance to meet some more of them tonight. And then lastly, I want to make sure on the picture on the right, I introduce Nina. 
Nina Martin, who's standing right next to Sharon, the second person in the picture to the right. Nina Martin is our intern at Georgia from Georgia State University. She's earning her bachelor's degree in social work. We found out in our team meeting today that she just got accepted to another university out of state to earn her master's. So we're going to miss her next year. Well, later on this year, when she goes off in the fall uh, to earn her master's. But Nina is awesome. In my meeting with her today, as we prepare for the new year, she also was asking for more. So we're working on some research projects and policy projects uh, together. And I, y'all, I am just so blessed to have people. I see you, Nina. She's here asking for more, more, more. Nina, can we tell where you're going to school? Yes. Um, <laughs> so I got accepted to University of Chicago in their social work program. Yes. So I'm excited for that. The Chicago crew is about the, you know, about, I already told you, there's a lot of Chicago people here. They, they're ready to embrace you. So we're going to move on. As I move on to the next slide, Luna, do you want to share your word? Um, just wanted to thank you, everyone. And uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you all and having a, this great team. Like, you know, the appreciation is there. The efforts are there. Everything is like so on dot, on point. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lubna. Lubna, again, is our admin coordinator. And again, you'll hear from Sharon tonight. You'll also hear from Ashley. All right. So membership updates. So in how many months has it been, Ashley, since uh, September? Six, yes. MBCI changed platforms to glue up. And so we're not, we think this is all of our members, but they have been so gracious in trying to make sure that was um that we, you know, all the information transferred over appropriately. So we have 286 members, 286 currently. And since our meeting in October, y'all, we have ba -ba -da -da, 76 new members. So yay, keep up the great work spreading the word about what we do. I urge everyone to check your membership status because you must renew annually. This is a national uh, early childhood association, professional association. So it is an annual membership. You may have gotten emails from Glue Up. If you haven't seen them, check your spam because this is now where you will renew your membership. If you renew it under an old email, old, old platform, then it may not transfer appropriately. Again, that's where we've lost some of our data. But Glue Up is the new platform that MBCDI uh, transfer, transitioned to in September uh, of 2023. And you should have an email if your membership is current. So make sure you activate your account so you can engage with us in Glue Up. It's a much more engaging platform. Actually, tell them what they can expect in Glue Up. Dr. Risa, let me tell you, Glue Up has so many amazing features. And this is really going to serve as a place for us as members of BCDI Atlanta, as a community, to really join together, have conversation, and engage, um, not just in advocacy work, but also in event plans and, and all of the amazing work we have coming up this year. You guys will get to know about it first because you are a part of the Glue Up community. Uh, you will see, again, Dr. Bisa mentioned, if you do not see emails from Glue Up, please check your spam because we will be sending out event updates, um, partnership opportunities, campaigns, all of these amazing things. And we want you guys to stay in the loop so we can make sure you are involved in every area of BCDI Atlanta, wherever you have an interest, a passion, or a gifting. We want to make sure we're using you all appropriately. Uh, we want to make sure we are also serving serving you all in the best way as well. And so Glue Up is going to be the place. You will start seeing little things from me soon. Uh, so again, just be paying attention to that email. And if you don't see it, just let us know. I'm really excited about Glue. Can you tell? I am. Dr. BC, you're muted. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave Ashley on screen because uh, spot on the spotlight because she's going to support this conversation as we dig into our legislative priorities. So in October, October 17th of 2023, that was our uh, quarter four affiliate meeting, which we do our policy briefing. And we asked you out of NBCDI's 80th Central Outcomes for Black Child Development, which came out last year, what do you feel is important for us to support here in Atlanta, here in Georgia? Focusing on our three areas, early care and education, literacy, family engagement. And of those, you all chose five different ones. So I am going to um, 
toss it over to Ashley to talk us through the process of what we did during that listening session and policy briefing and how we came up with the ones that we have, and then we'll discuss those. Although I am new to the B City I Atlanta world because it is a universe all in itself, it really is. Um, I was really excited about our October meeting because it was the first time that I got to hear each and every one of you um, engage in conversation about your interests, your passions, and your thoughts about what we really need to focus on in 2024. Um, in those conversations, in that meeting, we broke out into different breakout groups um, and we gave each group a name or a section of the pie, um, as you will. And out of that conversation, the consistent themes really fell under narratives. Um, each child is seen as a child, education, children attend schools that affirm and expand them, um, safe communities, children live in uplifting communities where they can play, explore, and thrive. Representation was also a very popular one, Dr. Bisa, um, where children can see themselves reflected in books and toys, as well as health. Infants are born at healthy weights and nutrition where children can enjoy food, you know, such as fruits and vegetables. And so we talked about all eight, but these are the ones that you guys were really excited about. And so for 2024, we really took all that information. Um, we made notes and summaries and compiled all that data from you all. And these are going to be our 2024 um, priorities. Okay. And it's also amazing how we've been able to marry them, honestly, with our legislative interests for the year as well. And so these are the things, thanks to you all. Um, thanks for you, you know, your feedback and your participation in that conversation. It was beautiful to sit in on some of them and hear what you guys thought and what you could bring to the table. So a treat, a little tidbit, Dr. Beast, I'm going to tell them a little secret. <laughs> um, because it was such an engaging process, we are going to continue to ask you guys to engage. Like this is the only way we get the work done, right? Is doing it as a community, doing it as a collective. So if you don't mind going into the chat, telling us where your areas of interest are. So when we come up with events and ideas, we can call on you all to really show up and push those agendas and initiatives forward. So again, I'm going to repeat them really quickly. Okay. Um, we're focused. Sharing. Hold on. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm going to go to the policy page where it shows. Yeah. A little bit um, better. And then, uh, Lubin, if you'll put the policy page link in the chat for those who want to see it on their own. So I'm going to stop sharing. So your screen is going to change a little bit. And I am going to open the policy page. This page, you guys, if you have not been on our website, it, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. We're going to make sure that link is in the chat, um, like Dr. Pisa said, so you guys can check it out. Again, this is due to your feedback, right? This is with your participation. This is based off of our conversations as a community. And so we're really excited about this. So we wanted to make sure you had up top, you know, what is it? What do we focus on when it comes to policy for So for board members, for all of our stakeholders who are on, if anybody asks you, just go to our page, right? Um, and on our, you have our programs here as well. And you can look at our programs pages, but all I did was click on from here, you can go to from programs to policy. And this is what our focus is for the next four months while legislative session is in. We put some quick hot links up here for you where you can go straight down to the 80 central outcomes. You can go straight, you can see our legislative parties, civic engagement. Uh -huh. I'm so sorry. We can't see the page. It's still showing oh, the PowerPoint. Really? Okay. Yes. Okay. No. Zoom. That's why I stop and let me do it again. <laughs> Okay. No. Thanks for letting me know because absolutely talking all this time. Now can you see it? There we go. Yes. Perfect. Still okay. So this is the page. And again, you see our information up top. Programs. You can see all of our programs here. If anyone, if you're ever wondering what we're doing, and then policy is there. Our little blurb about what we do. And then we have just I love our yeah, we have a great marketing team, but uh these are really um these targets allow you to go straight to that particular section or information so you don't have to look for it. So uh, we love to have those anchors there. And you can also see our legislative priorities. So as Ashley repeats those again, um, I want to let you know, if we, here's the 80 central outcomes of the five that we chose, 
if there is a when you hover over it, if it's a it, it, you can it it will link as well that he change it yeah made up change it yeah we have gone through so many changes trying to make this easy to follow you see our three main areas of focus one while NBC, BC Atlanta was running like 10 programs y'all uh last year and we decided we weren't doing that anymore again we're going to focus on early care and education literacy family engagement so we are streamlining that work in this way so you can see early care and education all right Ashley turn it back over to you Absolutely. So um, just so we can keep it in terms of programming, right? So I'll start with early care and education. Underneath that early care and education umbrella, our focus is, our focus, um, is going to lie really on three of those 80 central outcome, outcomes, excuse me, narratives, um, where each child is seen as a child. So if that's something you're interested in, that's something you want to partner with throughout the year with us, please put that in the chat so we can make sure we reach out to you when we have things coming up for that particular um point. Education. Children attend a school that affirms and expands them. I know we have a lot of educators online, and so um, please, again, put that in chat. Safe communities. Children live in an uplifting community where they can play, explore, and thrive, which is so crucial. Um, and then under our literacy programming, it's representation. Children see themselves reflected in their books and toys. Um, and, you know, literacy is a big deal for us, especially, you know, with Dr. Visa and, leader, and as our I like to call her our captain when she's not listening. Oh, so as our captain, she is steering the ship in the right direction. And literacy is such a big focal point for her. And so uh, representation, anybody who wants to participate in that, let, just let us know. And then that what falls under family engagement is going to be health. Infants are born at a healthy weight and nutrition. Children enjoy foods with fruits and vegetables. Okay, so... Again, all of that information is located on our website. If you want to have in our follow-up email, you'll have all of these links. So you'll be able to go to these things and read through and just make sure that they align with your interests and passions and goals. But we would love to continue to partner with you all. Thank you so much for all of the feedback. Again, those conversations, we talked about that for weeks to come. After that, it was really awe and inspiring. Um, and we're going to continue to do that. So it seems like you guys really enjoyed being able to have that input and engagement with us. And so we're going to continue to listen to you, not just as our community, but, you know, and our partners in this fight. Thank I think, you. So I think that's it. I'm going to stop talking now. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> we love it. See, y'all see? We love, love, love Ashley. And so um, Ashley mentioned you have um, these are the areas. This is the NB City I I mean, yes, NBCDI's 80 Central Outcomes of Black Child Development, which all of the affiliates around the country should be focusing on in some way. Some affiliates may be focused on one, two, three. Based on what we did together in October, you, you said five, five out, out of the eight. And so that's how we came up with what Ashley just discussed. And so under each of these uh, program areas that we are focused on as an organization in Atlanta, you will see our goals for narrative, which I'll go over in the slideshow shortly, and we'll share the slides as well after the meeting. You have our education goal, you have our safe community goals, and you have our literacy goal for representation and our health and nutrition. And then you also have on this page our policy priorities. Shout out to Nina, our intern, Nina Martin, uh, working with me at my kitchen table. Uh, she was she helped to find uh, which policies we're currently focusing, uh, aligning with what we're trying to do here. But she's we we're also watching legislation during the session to see if there's anything else that comes up. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen again and go back to my slides just to make sure y'all are seeing the right thing. And in those slides, again, the team wanted to make sure that you had an easy way of viewing the information. So we actually are showing it in a different way. So here I am about to share. All righty. So uh, you have, thank you again, Ashley, for uh, pulling this part together as well. So we wanted you to be able to see this easily. And this is exactly what you just saw on our policy page. But also put in the chat still, if you're still thinking about how, how, how do you want to get involved? Like wh which area do you want to get involved? Put that in the chat. Our team is ch saving the chat and we'll be pulling you together based on where you said you feel like you can contribute. So for early care and education, you have the narrative. So first you have each child is seen as a child. That's what NBCDI has stated at, uh, under narratives. But under that, the bullet point, uh, the sub bullet is what we're focusing on as our goal. 
So for each one, I don't want to read it to you. You'll have it in your uh, email as well. But for each one, we have our goal set for all of the areas. Sorry, I went too fast. So that's early care and education. You chose three of the five um, in BCI, uh, three of the eight in BCI goals here of the 80 central outcomes. So three of them fell under early care and education, narratives, education, safe community. Two of them fell of the eight under family engagement, health. This is our prenatal three work, nutrition. This is our uh, health and wellness work. And then one of them fell under literacy, which is representation, as you heard Ashley share. So I'm going to go back one more time. Early care and education, three of the eight essential outcomes fall there. Two of the eight fall under family engagement. And then the literacy one uh, as well. So five of NBCI's eight essential outcomes for, child for Black child development you will have those in your hand. Again, they're also on our policy page and you will, in the chat, we want you to tell us where you feel you can focus, contribute so we can engage you in that work. So I'm gonna take one a pause and see if there are questions or comments. We can take about three minutes before we move to the next piece where we feature our programs. Any questions or comments? All right. So thank you all for um, the notes in the chat. Our team, as you see, they're good about pulling everything together. So make sure you make your notes in the chat. I think uh, Lisa has to say something. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Bisa, I just wanted to apologize for being so late. Um, it's been an unusual day. We didn't have to work because of inclement weather here in Macon. So I just thought I had the whole day off. I was focusing on my um, classwork, my assignments. And then I just finished dinner and sat down to relax and check my email and got this email. So I do apologize. I'm usually better at keeping up with my schedule. We're happy to have you here. Yes, we're happy to have you. So um, we're happy that you guys survived the weather. <laughs> so we preach between two programs. Just so you all can get an idea as you're trying to figure out where you want to focus, because you may not know that to the end of the meeting. Um, we chose two programs to share with you so you can understand just a sample, an example of what we're doing to uh, focus on the eight essential outcomes for Black child development. So we chose literacy. Uh, we'll also share our early care and education, our SPAN EC program. I see our coaches on, our education coaches. I see some of our advocacy uh, our advisory committee on from Expand ECE. Yeah, I'm just excited. I see some of our fellows on. So uh, Sharon Hudgens Beck will share that shortly. So I'm going to briefly share about literacy. So what are we doing with literacy? These are just some of the books, not even half of them. These are some of the books that we gave out last year under our Read to Succeed umbrella. And what we've been doing, because again, we were, yeah, you know, we had like 10 programs going. It was a lot. So we've decided to streamline our work. And in streamlining our work, we've been able to implement literacy in every single program. Just like you do in the classroom, we tell teachers that books should be in every learning center, writing material should be in every learning center. Well, we're putting literacy in every program. Um, Read to Succeed, we were able to give out books at different events, uh, whether I was speaking or whether we uh, an event we had on our own or we were partnering for an event, we gave out children's books. So the last event we had and uh, that we partnered in in 2023 was December 9th. Gwinnett Building Babies Brains had uh, their impact lab. They do two a year. I was their keynote. So I spoke on family engagement, uh, powerful families. And we were able to give out, uh, how many, we packed 200 backpacks. We gave out almost all of them. So everyone it left was, a backpack of five children's books, right, Ashley? <laughs> yes, it, it was quite a, quite a few. I, I want to say we were at 150. We okay. gave out 150 backpacks. And I think it was five books in each backpack. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So 2,500 books, but my math is math and right, right? We gave out uh, just at that event uh, alone. No, I'm sorry, my math is not math. And you said we had what now? We had five books and there were how many people? Five books and 150 backpacks went home with the different educators. So 
Got it. So six hundred seven fifty. You got it at seven hundred seven fifty. Yes, yeah. ma'am. I'm big. So 750 books on December 9th. And uh, we had Ash and Nina there. Thank you all for your support. Y'all, they were so excited to receive these books with culturally responsive uh, children. So uh, thank you, Ash and Nina, for supporting that. And to our partners at Gwinnett Building Babies Brains, which is an initiative that is implemented through Gwinnett County Public Schools. Ba -ba -da -da. In 2023, thanks to our measurement team for getting this number to us. We were able to distribute 5,480 children's books. Can I hear some cheers? See some cheers? Yes. Thank you to everyone who partnered with us in 2023. We were able to give out all of these books. And y'all know I'm a big thinker. So get ready. Get ready. I want to double this number in 2024. <laughs> My team is like, oh, Lord, there she goes. <laughs> I want to double this number. We want literacy again embedded in every single program. So we want to continue to give out books, 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 books that everyone's not, you know, buying all the time, books that have culturally responsive children in them on the cover even. So we're excited about our book distribution. And again, we implement it in literacy, family engagement, and early care and education. So books are everywhere uh, along with the backpacks from BCDI Atlanta. The other program we want to feature today uh, falls on the early care and education, and it is our Expand ECE program featuring our fellowship. We, in last, last year, we decided that we wanted to help people go to college. We're finding that one reason we're being told that children don't have as many teachers who look like them and there aren't as many leaders who look like them who are helping to make program decisions and decisions in boardrooms and uh, at different levels in education. We're being told it's because they don't have the credentials. That's what we're being told. So we're like, we can help with that. So we're helping early educators earn their degrees. This Expand ECE Fellowship Program, thank you to DECAL, I see DECAL on, Glenda. Uh, it is part of our Community Transformation Grant through DECAL and also some private funding where we are able to help 60 early educators earn their degrees in, uh, in early care and education, whether it's a social degree or a bachelor's degree. And the great thing about our program, remember, you don't have to be Black. You have to have Black children what, live and work with Black children. If you live or work with Black children, you're our people. That's who we're trying to support. And so we have fellows who may not look like us, but they're working with children and families who do. I am going to turn this over to Sharon Hudgens-Beck, who is our coordinator of programs, so she can ch share with you our uh, Expand EC program and introduce to you some special people we have on. Sharon. Thank you, Dr. Fisa. Thank you. So just to share a little bit more um, about our Expand ECE Fellowship, um, what is it, right? It is a fellowship, as Dr. Fisa said, for ECE professionals who are working towards an associate or bachelor's degree, attending a college or university here in the state of Georgia. Why in the state of Georgia? Because DECAL scholars has academic tuition assistance. And so if you are attending a school in Georgia, you can get extra support through DECAL Scholars. So why are we doing this? Dr. Bisa said it, right? To increase the number of degreed BIPOC ECE professionals, right? And the need for culturally responsive teachers for Black children, no matter what their race, right? Then how are we doing it? This is the good part. This is what I like, right? We provide coaching for the fellows and you're gonna meet our coaches in a moment. We are providing them with large group, small group and individual coaching. We just had um, our celebration last week. Um, and that was our large group celebration. And there, the coaches will do small group sessions to get more intense and dig deeper into topics that are relevant to our students as far as work-life school balance, right? Um, as well as um, cultural relevancy. Um, and, and any other topics that our fellows are letting us know that they would like to have more information and support with. Then, Dr. Beast is so amazing when she writes for these grants, each and every one of our fellows, our coaches, and our advisory committee 
will receive membership to NBCDI, which also includes BCDI Atlanta. And so their membership has been paid for through our funding. So that is definitely a perk to be a part of this national organization and especially our local affiliate, BCI Atlanta. And to it doesn't stop there, right? You all know that we're gonna have our amazing summit in February. So guess what? Those same people that we just mentioned also get scholarship for our 2024 summit. And this year is two days. So I'm not gonna say more about that because Dr. Bisa will tell you later. So let's go ahead so we can meet our coaches. This is the Expand ECE team. Now, as Dr. Bisa said, there are lots of other people who work in the background, but we're on the front line. And so we have Dr. Sheila Thomas, who is one of our coaches, Tanasha Mahone, Charlene Duncan, and Lakeisha McClendon. And when I tell you they are amazing. I get to meet with them every week to plan, um, to execute, as I said, um, for them to share back with me what's working, what's not. We brainstorm, we problem solve. But this is one of the most amazing teams that I have ever worked with. You all, they are so supportive. No matter what I ask for them to do, they get it done and they get it done in a very timely manner. So kudos to our coaches who support our fellows. Oh, look at this. As I said, before I do this, Dr. Bisa, I want for all of our fellows who are in the room to type fellows in the chat so that we know who you are and the fact that you are being represented. And then we would also like for our advisory committee members, because I see some of them in the room tonight, to put in there that you are an advisory committee member so that all of our community can see who you are and we can recognize you. So what we did on um, last Thursday, we recognized the fellows. We have two groups. One group started with us in August and a second group has started with us this month in January. So our coaches celebrated our fellows by giving them a word that represents who they are. And so I'm not going to read all of them because it would take us forever, but you can read and see some of the words that our coaches gave to these fellows. And this is just after engaging with them for about four months, everybody. And so uh, four or five months. And so as we go through Look, ambitious, lifelong learner, focused, motivated. This is just amazing, right? Look, more words and more fellows, right? Adventurous, ambitious, determined. These fellows are amazing. And we have more fellows. Remember, we have four coaches and so we've got four slides. Tenacious consistent and our I think this is our final group right we've got charming flexible creative so as I said everybody our fellows are absolutely amazing our coaches and our bots let me tell you something one of our fellows had a question on Thursday she put it in the chat and I didn't know the answer. Well, guess what? One of our amazing advisory committee persons put a link in the chat and said, you can find more information here. And so that's what we mean when we say community, my advisory committee person had my back, right? So when all of us come together to work together for a common cause, be the, the fellows, this is, this is the thing guys. And we have some fellows who will be graduating in May, and I can't wait to let everybody know um, who those people are when we get to um, the end of the semester in May. So a round of applause for our fellows. I hope that they type in the chat who they are so that we can heart them and clap for them um, and give them some kudos and encouragement. Thank you so much, Dr. Bisa.
Thank you so much, Sharon, uh, for leading this work with us and to all of our coaches. Our fellows are amazing. Uh, we have family child care educators. We have classroom, um, whether they are working, some of them are working in, in pre-K as assistant or co-teachers. Some of them are working in uh, traditional child care centers. Y'all, we have a mixture of everyone and they work so well together. Also shout out to uh, DECAL again. I, I saw Glenda, and I mentioned her earlier. I see Edward Rowell is here as well from DECAL. And again, this is one of the projects, this is the project uh, where uh, that's supported by DECAL, our community uh, community Transformation Grant. So we are thankful uh, for our partnership with DECAL. What is new? Thank you for asking. So <laughs> y'all, I know you have been waiting. Wait no longer. BCI Atlanta is publishing, has finished publishing volume two of Nurture, our Nurture Journal. It is our peer-reviewed journal. And you will be receiving an email very soon on how you can access this journal. Thank you to, uh, thanks to funding from Georgia Budget and Policy Institute, uh, Fund Georgia's Future, and a couple of other private funders. We were able to offer this journal for ba -ba -ba -ba, free 99, as Sharon likes to say, <laughs> free 99. <laughs> so we are uh, just so excited to offer this journal. It looks so good. Our team reviewed it again today before we sent it out. Y'all know I'm a little anal. Uh, so we are going <laughs> to send it out so that you can access our nurture journal. And we decided that this year, uh, this volume is focused on unleashing the genius of Black voices. Yes, the one you see with the cape, that was our first edition uh, that we had released in fall. It took us a minute, y'all, because when I have these bright ideas, we don't usually have any money for it. I just kind of do it anyway. <laughs> Sorry, board. Sorry, staff. But now that we finally got some funding, uh, we are putting it out there. So thank you to all of the work that everyone does, especially when I have my bright ideas. So be on the lookout for uh, Nurture Journal. We also have um, an online community. And you may, may have heard of LEAN, our Leadership and Equity Advancement Network. We launched LEAN in 2020 or 2021. And we were doing monthly sessions, uh, virtual sessions on different topics that leaders told us they needed to learn in early education. And then everybody got Zoomed out, Zoom fatigue, and they were like, look, we're tired of going to stuff. So we got it. We get it. We decided to make this a 24-7, round-the-clock online community that's available for everyone. Uh, Sharon, do you want to share any information about Lean before we move on? Sure, I will, Dr. Pisa. We need you. Everyone in this room, Lubna has put the link in the chat. I want you to go tonight when we get off of this Zoom and go ahead and sign up. It is a platform, it is a community that looks just like Facebook, operates the same way. And the reason we need you is because it is a, a place for educators, by educators, for educators, right? But there are so many of us in the room that do different things that you can share. You can share your upcoming events. You can share information about your organization. You can share resources there. Um, the more that we gather and share information in our lead community, the more access people will have uh, to information. And so we encourage you all to join, join, join. Thank you so much, Sharon. Yes, lean, lean, lean. Y'all know we love an acronym. All right, the last part of our meeting, and again, stay on if you will, because we want to uh, take a group picture when we're done. If you're interested, put on some lip color if you want, those of you guys. <laughs> uh, so ways to get involved. Uh, we always share, hey, share your story. This helps with our impact. One thing that we want to do, uh, we've been striving to do as an organization is tell our story better. You know, we, we love doing so much in the community, but we haven't done a good job at telling our story. So we want you to help us to tell our story. What have we done that supported you and you like for us to include when we're sharing our story? So help us with our impact story by sharing your story. So the link is, um, is available on our website, maybe in the chat as well, but you also have the QR code here that you can use from your phone. Uh, you can give, y'all know, uh, donating. We are a nonprofit organization, so every dollar counts. 
And again, I have bright ideas, but not always funding. So uh, it's your, your every dollar counts. Become a member if you're not already a member or you need to renew your membership. We invite you to become a member of the National Black Child Development Institute. And we would love it if you would choose Atlanta as your affiliate. So become a member and our members link is in the chat so that you can learn more about membership and you can join. Remember, if you weren't on at the beginning of the meeting, uh, September 6th, NBC I changed to a new platform called Glue Up. So you may not be in the new platform or to renew. So make sure you go to our link here and it will take you to the right place. We love our late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. III. So his birthday is coming up. We're excited that this Monday is not just an observance of his birthday, but it's actually his birthday, January 15th. So we like to share actual events that are going on. And we've also been sharing them in our newsletter. So you can go to our news page and our website for that link. Um, and our December newsletter actually has this information so you can see it better. Uh, but you'll have a follow-up email as well from us. So, hey, we hope that you get a chance to do something to engage next week or this week even because there are events going on ever since the 4th to support the work of and the memory of Dr. King. Advocacy Day at the Capitol. Mark your calendar for March 6th. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are working with the legislators right now to reserve a room uh, and legislative session started yesterday in Georgia. It goes through April. March 6th is our date and we will let you know what room we'll be in and help you to prepare for our advocacy day. You'll get a whole separate email about that. But go ahead and mark your calendar because we would love to have you with us as we go to the Capitol and engage with letters. They love coming to talk to us when we go too. So hopefully you'll get a chance to be a part of that. We don't just go take pictures, y'all. We go down there with papers in hand. Look, who's supporting this? Who's on the appropriations committee? Who's on the education committee? We are very intentional about going to the Capitol and what we do while we're there. This is the event Sharon mentioned earlier. You know that in February, we have our Culturally Responsive Early Education and Care Leadership Summit. It is two days this year because Glenda, I'm letting you know you inspired this, uh, Glenda. <laughs> Linda Davis Canteen at DECAL, she has been saying for the longest, we want to dress up, we want to dress up. And we haven't been able to because COVID hit and we had to do everything virtually, but we are dressing up this year and we are going to have an event, an evening event, y'all. So buy your Sunday best, your come out there looking great. And we have an amazing talent, Grammy nominee, Anthony David is performing. If you haven't heard his music, just Google him. <laughs> but also in our newsletters, we always try to feature each month one of his performances, one of his songs. Anthony David is performing. It's a very intimate setting. And the, the food, listen, y'all, <laughs> the food is awesome. The caterer is amazing. So you all know we like to eat. And we, the food is cultural as well. But it's in the way it's designed is ways you probably haven't eaten it before. I, just come, just come. So we have food, drinks, and a performance. So it's from 6 to 9 on February 20th, and it will be at the Westside Cultural Arts Center. And then the next day, then we're going to come and be real serious, okay? <laughs> we'll come and be serious on the second day, where we'll have our, our usual, our, our summit from 8.30, from 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. at the Loudermere Conference Center. And so we'll have four rounds of sessions, uh, three rounds of sessions, three rounds of sessions on four tracks. So you'll have a chance to go. There are 12 choices that you'll have. We'll have an opening panel, a closing panel. If you are presenting, put it in the chat and just say, I'm presenting so that we can uh, recognize you as well. But we hope to see you on February 20th and 21st. If you have not already uh, completed your registration, please make sure that you do so. If you are a member, check your email because you have an email from us with the what? Discount code. Yes, discount code. So make sure uh, you access your discount code before you register. We also have sponsorship opportunities. Y'all, they were limited and we're starting to fill up on sponsors, but we want you there. So sponsors, if you are a sponsor, you have the opportunity on the first night um, where we have the performance where you can have a VIP section. Y'all, these VIP sections are so nice. You're going to feel like you're at the Grammys or something. 
So I recommend that, hey, if you want to be a sponsor for that first night, you can uh, get the VIP section as a part of your package, but it's all included. You can go to our page and see the sponsorship opportunities or and or you can sponsor the summit itself. So all of that information is there. I'm going to go into detail because there's so much to choose from. We try to uh, choose different levels of sponsorship so that anyone who wanted to support us could find a way to support this effort. We need volunteers. <laughs> volunteers are important. Ashley, you want to? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so we are really excited again about working with our community, working with our village to continue to do great work in the community and also just support one another and, and engage with one another. And so if you are looking for an opportunity to volunteer, if you have someone on your team that needs or is looking for an opportunity to volunteer, we are accepting volunteers for both events um, and a little secret, a little secret. OK, that's the secret. If you volunteer, you get to come for free. So I'm just saying, if that's something you're interested in, um, please make sure I'm putting the link in the chat right now. Uh, please make sure you sign up to volunteer. We would love to have you on the team um, and get you in to support these amazing events on both days. Thank you, Ashley. And we increase the number of volunteers to make sure that you also have some time to enjoy the event. So, you know, we're that's how we yes. are. That's how we roll. Uh, so we hope that you can come and uh, you can volunteer as well. You can volunteer for one or, bo or both days. From NBCDI, a couple of things coming up, a couple of events. One, they're on the 25th. They're having, uh, they, they started last Thursdays is what they're called, last Thursdays a couple of years ago. And, and it's their virtual learning ser series. The first one um, is a partnership with Sesame Street. So it's centering our children, shifting narratives for a child-focused future. So uh, you have the QR code there, and you also have it in our newsletter. But if you follow on social media, uh, the link is there as well for you to register for NBCDI's um, free event. What I love about the partnership with Sesame Street is that they actually offer you CEUs. So if you want to come, if you come, you get at least, I think you get one CEU for participating. Ba -ba -da -da. Again, in case you didn't know, Atlanta was chosen as the location for the 2024 NBCDI, the national conference. So in October, the national conference will be here, held right here in the A. We are already excited. We met with NBCDI and what we'll be planning, uh, our board meets in February. Uh, our board retreat is in February. So we have two events to plan, two things to plan. We're we're taking care of the vendors, but we're also, we have to plan the gala. So those are the two things that we're doing, uh, board and team, the gala and the uh, vendors is what we're working on. We, have, we don't have the location yet, but again, that's what we'll be planning together. So you can start thinking as we get ready for our board retreat. And any updates we have, of course, in our quarterly meetings, we'll be happy to share. So that's what we know so far about the NBCDI conference in October. Everybody's so excited, you guys. Everybody's so excited. They have been so respectful of us. They waited, they're waiting until we uh, finish our summit registration and sponsorships, and then they'll be announcing their opportunities. So we like to play well together that way. You can give, give, give. So Again, we have bright ideas. We're always trying to help our children. Anyone who anyone who works with our children lives and works with our children. And sometimes the funding, most of the time, the funding is restricted, where you can only use it for this or only use it for that. We like to have unrestricted funds where we can use it for what we know we need it for, in addition to just what they're asking us to use it for. So again, you can always use more than you're given. Hopefully you all know by now that we use every dollar the right way. Most people are here from their heart. Nobody's getting paid big bucks to that. They, they could probably get paid double somewhere else, but we're happy that everyone is here. And we hope that you can donate. You can text a donate you can do it recurring. It's your choice, uh, but please give and support our work. Our quarterly affiliate meetings, y'all know we like to give these at the top of the year. We gave them out in October as well, but our quarterly affiliate meetings are uh, here on your screen. And again, you'll get a follow-up email with it as well. But this is what I like to do. I simply go to our calendar page, which is available on our events page. 
and that link is coming in the chat. When you go to our events page, you can actually copy that calendar onto your own. And it's already color coded where you can have all the dates. Anytime we make any updates or add anything to our calendar, you can see it. And we like to plan on our calendar 18 months in advance. So, you know, these, these dates have been there, but you can add our calendar to your calendar so you can see what we have going on and you don't have to add it individually. So these are our dates for 2024. So our next meeting is in April. And as you know, in October, we always take five to six as our annual business meeting. If you are a member, that's when we go over all the boring stuff, the, you know, the budget, we elect the new board members and all of that. So uh, then we have our meeting at 630. Stay up to date again, go to our events page, and this is where you can see what is coming up. You can also subscribe to our newsletter if you're not currently subscribed, or if you change roles and it's on an old job email, make sure you're up to date there and copy the calendar to your calendar. If you're not following us on social media, we invite you to follow us on social. We're on it's, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're also on YouTube. We're on Twitter slash X, but we, we don't know we're going to stay on there. So that's a whole nother conversation <laughs> that we're having as an organization uh, trying to decide if it's ethical, if it align, aligns with our values to stay there. But, you know, more to come on that. But you can follow us on social media to stay up to date with what we're doing. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can get ready for a picture. And as we get ready for our picture... Yep, come on the screen. We have a few minutes to answer any questions that anyone may have as well as we, yeah, come on the screen if you can. If you can't, it's okay. We're not going to make you. So on the count of three, I will be snapping a picture. Look at your little dot so we can see your gorgeous or handsome face. All right, one glass back on them one two three <laughs> take my camera off make sure i got it good one two three let me get the second screen because we have two screens of people today one two three <laughs> i love it dr barry one two three <laughs> thank you all so much for joining us i am going to see if you have questions that we can answer or comments, you can use the chat or you can unmute. We will, we have about 10 minutes. Yes, I have a question. Uh, when you were talking about being uh, affiliated with Sesame Street, you said something about a C, 